Yeah, so normal training time, um, it, I usually get up twice. My son uh, gets up 7, 7.30, something like that. Um, I'll get him up, try to get him out of the room and, and keep him from waking up everybody else. Um, Lakeland is usually the next one up. My wife gets up around that time, pretty close to after. We're always up around the same time because Trice is so loud when he gets up. He just starts yelling. And uh, so we get up, hang out for a little bit, um, usually try to eat some breakfast, maybe go downstairs. I have a rower. I have pretty much everything I need downstairs, and so maybe I'll do some intervals. Depends on the time of year, too. You know, If we're talking pre-games time, um, I'll usually go out to the barn. Everybody's up at the barn around 9, 30, 10 o'clock. We'll train till about noonish, one maybe, and then we'll eat a little bit, hang out, come back together, uh, train for two or three hours. Um, my kids are in and out of there the whole time if we're at the barn. If I'm going to the gym, Lakeland's old enough now that she goes to me with any time I say I'm going to the gym, she wants to go. Um, and then 5.30 or so, we kind of hang out in family time and do the dinner thing and maybe walk to the end of the driveway and back, you know, and do that type of stuff. We have a, a long driveway, a half-mile driveway, um, about 800 meters. And um, then about from about 6.30 to 8, it's mass chaos in our house because literally I'm trying to keep Trice from falling asleep because he has to wait till 8 o'clock or else he's up all night and he wants to fall asleep at about 7.15. So it's just a constant battle trying to keep him from melting down and having a fit and Lakeland from pushing him down or doing whatever. So it's literally from that time, 6.30 to 8 o'clock, it's, it's full-on you know, family time chaos. Then about 8, Trice goes to bed. Um... If it's real heavy games time, I've been, I have a cold tub that I kind of sit in at night for about 15 minutes and kind of try to chill out, literally chill out. And uh, then I'll come back up, shower, hang out with my wife or Lakeland or whoever's still up, and then we go to bed about 10, 10.30. It's, that's pretty much the routine every day. 7 a.m. Quite good. Yeah, yeah. He's a pretty decent sleeper. He, well, he gets up a few times during the night. So my wife used to basically handle him all night. And then when we got Violet, uh, that I got Trice. And so he slept great as long as my wife had him. And then as soon as I got on Trice duty, he was immediately was like, nah, dude, I'm not sleeping anymore. So he gets up a couple times. But it's enough to give him a bottle or a pacifier and he falls back asleep. But still getting up, which isn't fun. Yeah, I'd let them do it as long as they, they had experienced some other sports and made sure that, I mean, I don't want to force them into anything other than I want them to be physically active in some way, but I would rather, you know, if they're high school, middle school, I'd rather them play sports. And um, I learned so much from coaches who, um, you know, just were hard on you, but, but good. And then I had, you know, some of my best friends I played baseball with and football with. So um, I, would, I would like for them to have those opportunities first. And then after they're done competing or playing sports or tired of that, I would let them We'll, we'll discuss competing in CrossFit. I think, you know, competing in CrossFit is a, a completely different thing than, you know, being in an affiliate. You know, there's, there's com two different things. You can't really compare the two. And I, I will do CrossFit for the rest of my life. Obviously, I won't compete for the rest of my life, but um, I'll do some form of CrossFit. Yeah, we kind of talk about that in um, in our master class or seminar or whatever you want to camp, whatever you want to call it. But um, you have to look at, you know, how much is enough and how much is too much. You know, running twice a week at 5 to 6K uh, actually improved my running. You know, 5 to 6K in each of those sessions actually improved my strength. Um, I'm sure, you know, if I got more than that, and we tried to mess around and do a little bit more than that, and it just beat me up. And so we kind of learned, and it's just trial and error, and it's feedback from the athlete to the coach. It's, um, you know, it's the coach being open-minded to say, all right, 
I, you know, enough is enough, and we're seeing decent gains or good gains here. Um, let's not let's not run you into the ground. So, um, yeah, I just think there's you know the interference effect or whatever. But I think as long as you're um, constantly evaluating where you are as an athlete, your training program, and, and communicating with the coach or whoever's programming for you, I think you're you can be just fine. This year, a lot less, <laughs> actually. You know, with the knee, <clears throat> I noticed that when I did that type of stuff, it really took a toll on me. You know, we still, heavy is relative. You know, we still did some heavy Metcons and some, some heavy-ish work, but not this year I did a lot less heavy squatting and a lot less heavy Olympic lifting. And actually, I mean, I snatched 290 at the games, and the most I'd snatched was 265 in the last year and a half. So I'm... You know, something about CrossFit works. Uh, it's, it's amazing, right? So, uh, but yeah, I noticed this year that I was like, All right, let's just see what happens. And I, I honestly, I felt pretty good. Uh, you know, I, obviously, I'd like to feel a little bit stronger and a little bit more stable on some stuff. But, you know, that's where we're at. I've, I've been doing this thing for, this would be going on 10 years competing. So, uh, it's, a, it's a decent career. So, Yeah, uh, one, I'm not getting nearly enough sleep or as much sleep. That's one of the biggest keys, I believe, to my recovery when I was an individual is I slept a lot. Um, what I've noticed, too, is I need to eat more and carbohydrate. Uh, I eat more carbohydrates than I thought I needed to, <laughs> or I eat more, yeah. Um, when I started working with RP, I just I realized I was grossly under eating. And so that's been something that's actually helped a ton. Is e and eating through the middle of the day where I used to just, you know, I'll be fine. Um, I've noticed by that second training session, if I eat, I feel so much better and actually don't feel as beat up. And so that's been a big thing. And I sleep a lot better, too, when I, you know, am fully fueled. <sighs> no, not really. And it's hard, too, with what we do is, you know, every day is kind of relative to that day. You know, you, you, there's a lot of factors that go into that. You know, obviously, we're tra traveling and sleep's not been optimal, recovery's not been optimal. Um, so it's hard to really track that type of stuff. But even when you're at home, you know, we do so much, so many different things. And I try to not to get too caught up in, you know, where I'm at in a particular time. I, I know by feel now that I've been doing it so long and just with experience where I need to be and how, you know, like how I feel in the middle of a workout. If I'm super gassed when I shouldn't be gassed, then I know something's up. And that's, I, I, train more by feel and kind of know where I'm at more by feel too as well and a good thing is is we have a lot of great athletes to kind of compare yourself to in different workouts so you you know it's a constant it's a constant measuring stick